So hello and welcome to the episode three of Tarot Talk on the Sacred Indian Tarot with the, the author Kiran Rai. And this this episode three is going to be all about the female archetypes or the female powers of these cards, which are uh, the High Priestess or the Shash, uh, Shakti and Empress of Shashti. So Shashti. what do these... Shashti, yes. So what do those these two cards mean and what is it all about? And we'll know from Kiran Ma'am today. So yes, Kiran Ma'am, the, the stage is all yours, as we say. So. Thank you, Vinayak. You're such yeah. a natural, actually. You know? <laughs> okay, so today I'm going to tell you about the feminine energies in the tarot. And, you know, the feminine archetypes are extremely mysterious they're ambiguous they're complex they're difficult to understand and most people don't understand that what is the significance of getting the high priestess so today i'm going to try my best to explain to you what is the high priestess because you know whenever uh, you read the interpretation it says that she has some secret knowledge and uh, you know a uh, you must kind of uh, go on your intuition on the basis of that secret knowledge. But today I'm going to try and demystify what that means. So uh, the high priestess card, the visual of the rider white weight is that you have La Papisse, the Pope, the Lady Pope. She's sitting between two pillars. One pillar is black and there's one pillar that's white. And she has a book. It's a secret book. In her, in her lap, she's sitting on the crescent of the moon and she has the waxing, the waning and the waxing moon. Now, she actually represents the third column, which is the middle column. And what does that mean? That the high priestess knows that there is existence of duality, of polarity. Okay, and she's an acceptance of this polarity She's an acceptance of the negative energy, the positive energy, black and white, good and bad, good and evil. And she, as being in the sacred place of the third column, knows how to navigate her way. She's a very, uh, she's a very experienced woman. Time and life have been her teachers. And she understands the secrets and the reason for our presence in the world. So that is the secret knowledge which can be understood through experience of life and through intuition. Now I'm going to talk about Shakti. Shakti is the Indian archetype of the high priestess. Now let me tell you something about uh, Shakti. As legend has it, Mahisha Sur was a king with the head of a buffalo. Okay? And he was a staunch worshipper of Lord Brahma after years and years of penance. Brahma was finally pleased with his devotion and gave him a boon. What was the boon? That you are immortal. No man, no animal can kill you. Uh, Mahisha Sur became mad with power. And what did he do? He started waging war in Trilok, that is uh, earth heaven and hell. And then he started, uh, he also went to Indra Lok and wanted to wage a war with Lord Indra. Now all the gods started getting very panicky and they all came together and decided we better defeat him because, you know, we're all going to be destroyed. And what happens that Brahma, Vishnu and Shiva, the creator, the destroyer and the manifester of of the universe, they all came together and they said that the only and the only person who could destroy him was a woman. So they conferred and they created Shakti, which is pure energy, pure consciousness. There is no higher energy than Shakti in the world. So they created Shakti, who finally destroyed Mah uh, Mahesha Shur and this demon was destroyed and in her destructive mode, she becomes Kali. So Shakti actually is a manifestation. 
and this image of this wild eyed battle goddess what is she really symbolize she symbolizes spiritual and psychological liberation okay so let's go a little deeper into this now i must tell you something for all our western viewers that in india we celebrate durga puja there are nine days It, that we celebrate each aspect of the durga uh, of shakti the nurturer the great mother the destroyer the cre- creator in all her aspects on the ninth day all the statues are taken and immersed in water so what is what is it that uh, so why do we evoke shakti okay the question is why do we get why does the high priestess card pop in when you doing a tarot reading the high priestess card comes in a reading when you are asked to uh, tap into the experience of life or to withdraw from life and in the indian scenario maybe uh, you know maybe do yoga which is the union of the mind body soul or just meditate to understand that everything that is overt is not real you've got to go deep into yourself to find solutions also to accept dualities and contradictions within you so when do we evoke the shakti card we evoke the shakti card when there are, there is some kind of a conflict when there are divergent polarities and you can access the information within yourself by practicing uh, meditation or by withdrawing okay and that is when you'll get the true information to face any conflict that is coming into your life or also to fight your own demons and your self doubt so that is the purpose of the high priestess right I think it was quite clear of why high priestess so, is there. So okay so the only thing is that when you can when you can evoke shakti the power of shakti the goddess durga the goddess the great mother the nurturer the destroyer the creator all within you it is a great gift because you are empowered you are empowered to face life you are empowered to face a situation in your life and it's also a, a woman who is showing a lot of maturity diplomacy and you know everything is not overt about her she is she's she's a delicate negotiator that is when you get the high priestess according to me yeah okay so would you like to throw some light upon the imagery yes. yeah well i mean you know she's this war crazed shakti who is destroying the asura and she's got the power to destroy the world within her so this is a very iconic uh, uh, imagery a very iconic picture image of the goddess shakti so that is why i've given the the high priestess and in the in in the eastern part of the country which is bengal and assam you know she is venerated as the very uh, primordial form of energy the purest form of energy is shakti so this is the the visual that is displaying the power of the of the of the goddess the secret information she has about the universe she is the greatest mother and she can be a nurturer she can be a destroyer she can be she can be a nourisher a creator a protector but she can also be have a, she also has a dark side to her mm. you know so these are all the manifestations of the high priestess and sometimes when you get the high priestess is rever- reversed it's actually telling you to to uh, come to terms with your dark side and emerge so that is my interpretation of the high priestess and the goddess shakti 
Over to you. So this image here. Yeah. What's the what's the relevance? What why is that there? Is is that a wand? Is it from the full card with that um, support staff, or what? What is that? Is she holding it, or is he holding it? What is it? I think no, that's no, no. Uh, that's the resemblance to to Trishul, right? Yeah, but she kills the demon god. She mm -hmm. killed the demon god who was overtaking. Ah. Uh, who who was overtaking earth, heaven, and hell, and only she had the power to kill him. So, so that's was, like a a sword. Yeah, it's Or a like star. it. It's okay. like a, it's a weapon. It's Lord Shiva's weapon, actually. Okay. Okay. So this is symbolic of killing the demon. Uh, you know the Asura, and also all the demons within you. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And it's the it's the knowledge that only a female has. You know. Because Ooh. feminine energy, energy is. <laughs> We lost a thousand million viewers there. <laughs> Ooh, the power of a woman. <laughs> That is Shakti. And in India, we were primarily, uh, you know, we were worshippers of of feminine energy of the yogini power. So for centuries we worshipped uh, female energy, and you know Shakti is pure consciousness, pure energy. But why? Why do I feel that the card that you have is redder than mine? You I do something. <laughs> yes. Maybe there's something with the light. Might be. Maybe that's the moon card. I was just I was just showing the moon because on the forehead it's the same symbol, you know. So, also because you know, like, yes, yeah. So I was yes. just showing. I know it's the moon. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I thought we were psychic. I thought I thought you lot were psychic. I know why she's holding the moon. Yeah, I understand that. <laughs> so, yeah. So the moon also is in the in the in the priest high priestess. She she has it exactly. here, and she's sitting exactly. on the crescent of the moon. Yeah. yeah. So and when I come moon. to the moon card, and I'm when I devil. come to the moon card, yeah. which is also a female energy. Yeah. So yeah. you have so the two eight, are very you have eight. Yeah. Yeah, you have eight masculine energy, eight female energies, and five gender neutral. In the major arcana, and each very of the uh, <laughs> sorry, v very new era transgender. <laughs> yeah, Tarot is very modern and yeah, so oh, relevant. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. So I, yeah, I so that was a devil. About, yeah, I was I was just curious about the bindi or this kumkum. That's the red. Uh, that's the third eye. That's okay. the doorway to your soul, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. that is the information that the high priestess has, mm. the deep knowledge, you know, mm. which is is as immemorial as time. She's a very old soul, a very experienced soul, and you know, I always used to wonder how is she so early in the uh, in the Hierarchy of the cards, you know, because it's a journey. It's because it's telling you that keep, you know, you. That's where you have to reach. Listen, yeah. So the high priestess. This is the the crescent of the half moon. This is the third eye because this is where she can tap in all the knowledge, all the mystery. You know, and there's a lot within that there is out. So that is the the doorway to her soul. That's the key to the information that the high priestess has. Excellent. Her Excellent. intuition. 
So have we still got time for her? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, yeah. we have. We have quick time. Yes, we can. Yeah. Do that. Oh, we. It's a long card. I'm sorry. You know, this has taken a long time. <laughs> okay, quickly. Now, uh, Shashti is the Hindu goddess of fertility and childbirth. She is worshipped all over India and in the world. In this painting. she has she shown with a child in her womb seated on a bed of lotus flowers with a halo around her head that radiates energy abundance fertility creativity right mm -hmm. yeah. okay now let me tell you something about the goddess shashti a very colorful story in in the olden days the uh, child mortality rate was very high because there was no medicine and most women died in childbirth and they lost their children in in uh, within 5 or 6 days of giving birth so the goddess shashti was worshiped every 6 day on every 6 day of each lunar month and also all barren women who wanted to conceive a child prayed to the goddess to to give the, give a seed in their womb also when their baby was born on the 6th day shashti was requested to give her blessing to the little one so that he could live so that is the goddess shashti okay mm -hmm. so is she is she relevant to the chatti that is done for the children for the children Oh, that's or that's a chhat puja or something, right? Not chhat puja. It's called chhati. It's called it's in some parts of. Oh yes, chhati means sixth. That's right. Sixth that's sixth day. That's chhati it. That's it. Barhi that's well. right. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And in Bengal and Assam, eastern uh, eastern India, you have temples that are dedicated to the goddess Shashti. Most North Indians and South Indians might not know so much about her, but the whole of the Eastern Belt, there are temples dedicated to the goddess Shashti, asking her for a blessing, asking her, you know, to help in procreation, creativity. So, so now I'm going to tell you something. In Indian folklore, the Great Mother is. you know the purest form and she can be seen as the primeval womb the spring of life the creator of the universe she is so powerful she can control she can command she can create and transform anybody who comes into her into her orbit and we have a famous saying which is maitri devo bhava would you like to say that uh, uh, vinayak can you say it maitri devo bhava right thank you so much yeah, okay Mahatri. so this is a verse from the upanishada and what does it say it's a maximum maxim that speaks about the boundless endless energy of a biological mother right so this is the this is what uh, shashti stands for now shortly the great mother her characteristics when your great mother is is comes out like in its in its form you are secure you are trusting you are decisive you are determined you are full of energy and you enjoy life and for all that you can manifest in your life okay but when it's reverse okay and the ultimate message of the empress card is self love and endless unconditional love for humanity that's the message according to me mm. and also she forms part of the emperor so it's once again the dual energy the emperor the empress and it comes straight after the high priestess now in polarity to the energies of the great mother is the dark mother who operates from the shadow energy of the great mother now she aspires to be in a position of control of power to win at all costs once she can overcome her ignorance her ego what is she what happens she transforms herself as pure energy the great mother so we have the the uh, the great mother and the shadow mother the shadow dark mother and the great mother 
so the this is the feminine energy that is in the in the tarot in the major arcana and i hope i can explain it to you i'll also briefly explain the you know the connection when i go to the moon card the justice card the strength i'll come back to them mm. yeah yeah okay okay so before we before we end this year um i was curious about this om so on her so sorry. so what is what is om mean tell me when i what is om mean that's a it's a boundless source of uh, energy it, ah om it's om. it's the purest boundless purest. the limitless. largest most you know encompassing energy and that yeah. is what is the great mother okay so she encompasses all of that in her womb that's right because yeah. she can yeah. give birth yeah mm-hmm. and that's mm-hmm. that's like creating creating magic creating yes. your new life yeah interesting mm. and and the halo over here the earth mo- mother this this is a, like the sun the mm. earth mother nurtures the whole the whole universe she mm. nurtures every life every piece of humanity is nurtured by the great mother yeah so biologically and metaphorically she she's the source of energy you've certainly made the um stand up for women power today with those two yeah. cards <laughs> <laughs> i mean yeah. um <laughs> Yes, I'm so It's enthused. Absolutely. I mean, we do need girl power, woman power, yin power. Um it is the Chinese New Year today at 4:00. I one. know. Yes. I know. So yes. they encompass both signs and the tarot does that. But we must um give birth to mother. If it wasn't for females, the males wouldn't be born so thank you very much mrs <laughs> <laughs> absolutely uh, absolutely <laughs> so it is important of course both sexes are important and we'll get to daddy tomorrow uh, next week <laughs> <laughs> daddy's coming in <laughs> daddy's coming oh <laughs> <Yeah>. it's <laughs> but no It's great having these explanations especially with the huge imagery with the devil in that card and the yeah. moon in that card. Yeah. Um and it's great to hear the story of that and I definitely will be listening over and over again to get it in my brain. Um the story of that <laughs> your woman. But yeah, it's absolutely fantastic to have the privilege to understand um the Indian the sacred Indian tarot by our lovely author Kiran Ray. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, no, thank you for doing this. Uh, the whole world is thanking you. <laughs> uh, apart from the men who, who tuned out, but but <laughs> they'll tune in next week. <laughs> yes. Okay. So, On I that note, let's say good night and yes. to women power. Yahoo! Yay! Yeah. Women power. The next week will be about the uh, yeah. male power. We're coming to daddy, uh, as I said. Daddy, daddy's coming. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> so do not Thanks, forget guys. to tune in next week and yeah. we wind up. So signing off. Bye bye everyone. Have a good night. Great week ahead. See yeah. You. And happy Chinese New Year to yeah. all the people around. Yeah. Bye okay. guys. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye.